Hi everyone, this is Saki Senpai and in this video I'm gonna show you how to get this type of lighting in Unreal Engine 5. This kind of lighting is called Gobos lighting and it's basically these things that you put in front of a light to make all kinds of patterns. They're mostly used on stages and dance floors and all. So our goal here is to create a similar effect with a 3D light. So let's get started and I'm going to start off with a blank project to keep things simple. First I'm gonna delete everything and I'm gonna delete the folders as well. Then I'm gonna go into my landscape panel and create a new landscape just with the default settings. And then I'm gonna go back into editing mode and drop in a spotlight. And I'm also going to drop in a post-process volume. Then I'm gonna go into the details panel for the post-process volume and search for infinite extent and turn that on. I'm going to search for the exposure settings and turn on minimum brightness and maximum brightness and set that both to one. Now I'm going to import this image. This is what the image looks like. And I'm going to have that image in the description as well. Now let's go into the content browser and create a new master material and I'm going to name it light mat. Then I'm going to open that up and I'm going to change the material domain to light function. Now let's drag the image into our material and plug that into the emissive color. So this is what the material looks like and I'm going to save it and then close it. And now I'm going to scroll down the details panel for our spotlight until we find the light function. And then I'm going to drag our light mat material into the light function. And now we just wait until the shaders compile. And this is what we have. So you can play around with the rotation settings to give it an angle. Here I'm just assigning a basic floor material to our landscape and I'm also going to drag in a sphere just to see how the light will interact with our object. I am assigning some basic floor material to our sphere as well. You can play around with the inner cone angle and the outer cone angle options. This is what it looks like so far but as you can see the shadows are too sharp and it doesn't look so good. So. Uh, so what I did was I took the same image into Photoshop and I blurred it and I also added a white vignette border to it so that it doesn't show sharp tiling when we tweak those settings later on. So now I'm going to drag that new image into our content browser. I'm going to open our light mat material and delete the previous texture image and replace it with the new one. I'm going to save it again and now you can see that our shadows look a lot better and more realistic. Now I'm going to go into the cinematics and add a new level sequencer. Then I'm going to click on this menu and go into create camera here and then select cine camera actor. That creates a camera right where you are in the viewport. Then I'm going to go into my level sequencer and then into actor to sequencer and select our cine camera actor. Now I'm going to show you how I actually animated the shadows moving. If we select our spotlight and scroll down to the light function option and click the little drop down icon, we see that we get these three X, Y and Z coordinates. You can tweak them to get the tiling that you want but right now we're going to use that to animate our shadows in the sequencer. So I'm going to open my sequencer again and click on track actor to sequence and this time I'm going to choose our spotlight. Now you can see that we only have our light component and color options here right now. But here we can add any option that our spotlight has and animate it using keyframes. So I'm going to click this track button that's next to the light component and choose light function scale and then vector and any one of the XYZ coordinates. Now you can see that we get our light function options here. Now I'm going to change my perspective to cinematic viewport and also choose our cine camera actor. Now I'm going to place my camera where I want it and then I'm going to extend the duration to around 400 frames in our sequencer. 
don't forget to drag this all the way till the end as well. Now I'm going to go into the transform properties for my camera and put a keyframe in the beginning, go all the way till the end and move my camera forward and place another keyframe in the end to get a slow panning shot. I'm also going to select both the keyframes right click on either one of them and set the interpolation to linear so that our camera pan looks much more natural and this is what we have so far now let's get to animating the shadows i'm going to go to the beginning of my clip and set three keyframes for the x y and z then i'm going to go forward by 15 or 20 frames change the values just a little on each one of them and that's going to set three new keyframes now i'm going to select all six keyframes go another 15 to 20 frames ahead and paste it there i'm going to do the same until it fills my entire sequence Now if you want to you can offset each of the keyframes so that they animate a little bit differently each time. I might have gone a little overboard with the values here but you can always experiment with your values and see what looks good for you. So this is the project file for the actual scene that I built using Megascan assets and I also have an SGRI here that I'm going to show you in a bit. But you can see that we have the same spotlight set up here as well. And if we go into our camera view and take a look at our sequencer, you can see that I've done the exact same thing here. The only difference is that I've spaced out the keyframes more and used lesser values to make the shadow animation slower and to make it look much more subtle and natural. Let me show you the setup for the SGRI that you can see in the background here. Uh, it's this sphere scaled all the way up so that it fills the entire scene and I've used an SGRI on it that I got from SGRI Haven. I've ticked the two-sided option here and uh, this is the node setup. And this node setup allows you to change the brightness of the background and also rotate it. You can pause the video right here and look at the node setup and replicate it if you want to. You can see that we can control the brightness value with the brightness parameter and the rotation with our rotation angle parameter. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I'm trying to grow my channel and that would really help out. Also subscribe for more tutorials like this and I'll see you in the next video.